to wait any longer? Yeah. Ready to go. Are, are you done yet, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. We put a piece of tape over Marley's face so we don't have to look at him. Very good idea. <laughs> Enough, should we go ahead and begin? Yes, please, sir. Please. And if, if you want to uh, bring the meeting to order and then uh, Kennedy could go over the logistics. Excellent. Well, I'm calling this meeting of the Prescott Active Management Area Groundwater Users Advisory Council to order. Today is Tuesday, June 30th, 2020, and the time is 9.04 a.m. This meeting is being held virtually. I am Jim Holt and I'm the chairperson. Would the members who are present please introduce themselves? Okay, I'm Bob Recker. Larry Tarkowski. Chris Marley. Kent Algarud. We were doing our introduction of the Groundwater Users Advisory Council members. We have a quorum. Would the ADWR staff members please introduce themselves? Enav Hennison is here, uh, manage the active management area section. Melissa Sykes, Water Management Assistance Program Coordinator. Sandy Shepard, GUAC Coordinator. Uh, Nick Redendo, Annual Water Reporting Coordinator. And for any members of the public who are interested in introducing themselves, would you please type your name and affiliation into the chat box? That's not you, Chris. <laughs> and maybe we could also have our presenters introduce themselves real quickly. Yes, sir. My name is Kent Halgerud. I'm with ADOT, Arizona Department of Transportation. Do we have additional presenters present? Uh, John Munderlow, Town of Prescott Valley, and also representing the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition. This is Kimberly Shonick with the uh, Territorial Parent Teacher Organization. I'm sorry, what your first name again was? Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. So we don't get to see all of those. And Mr. Chair, we're going to read. Uh, members of the public who introduced themselves uh, via the chat. Uh, so we have Cindy Daniel, um, doing that. Mark Wesso from the town of Prescott Valley, and then um, Kimberly introduced herself again on the, on the chat, and that's all we have. Okay, thank you. I would like to start with agenda item number two, webinar logistics. Kennedy Shepard will share with us some of the uh, information that might be useful for our webinar. Thanks, Chairman. All right, good morning, everybody. So before we start, I just want to go over some webinar logistics for the meeting. Um, we do ask that anyone who is not speaking to please mute your lines, and that can be done if you roll your cursor over the screen. You'll see in the bottom left hand, you'll see a picture of a microphone. If it's red, that means you are muted. If it's black, it means you are unmuted. Uh, members, you're more than welcome to remain unmuted if you like, since you will be speaking the most throughout this meeting. Um, and since we do have a lot of uh, um, items on our agenda today to make sure we get to them, um, members of the public, if you have any questions or comments throughout the presentations, please feel free to put that into the chat box, and we will read them at the end of the presentation. 
Um, but if you would like to uh, address the council, that will be our time during the call to public, and you are more than welcome to unmute yourself. Um, please state your name and say your question. Uh, finally, this meeting is being recorded, and that includes everything that is being said in the chat and will be available to the public on our website, hopefully by next week. And if you're experiencing any te technical difficulties, our help desk is available to you, and their number and email address is on the screen. And that is all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Kennedy. Um, our next agenda item is item number three, groundwater conservation grant applications. Uh, we will start with uh, presentations uh, or introductions from AMA staff members. That would be from Enov and from Melissa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I'm muted now. So thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to introduce the meeting. Uh, Melissa and I will go over some of the details and what uh, is to be expected from uh, agenda uh, item number three and four. So starting with the first half of the meeting, which is focused on the application submitted towards uh, the groundwater conservation grant, and we'll hear those four presentations from the um, presenters that were just introducing themselves. As you recall, these applications were submitted uh, towards the grant in the sum of $2 million that was appropriated by the legislators in January 2019 as part of the drought contingency planning agreement to support groundwater conservation projects in the active management areas. The grant money is divided among the five AMAs on a per capita basis with a minimum amount of $150,000 for AMAs with smaller population. Prescott AMA was allocated $150,000. Uh, this grant is administered by the Water Management Assistance Program, which also housed the funds generated from the groundwater withdrawal fees. And we'll start again by hearing those presentations about the four proposed projects. Melissa will advance the slides just to make the transition faster, so please just ask her to advance and she'll do that. Um, each presentation will go for about 10 to 15 minutes, after which GOEC members will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide comments. So, if you have any questions about the presentation section, I can take them. If not, Melissa will provide some more details on the second part, which is the application discussion process by GOEC members. Um, so, take it on, Melissa. Thank you, Anov, Chair Holt, and members of the Council and the public. After this presentation, we're going to move on to the application funding discussion, which where uh, GOAC members will evaluate the projects according to strength, groundwater to be conserved, the impact, cost effectiveness, innovative qualities, as well as AMA needs and funding available for each project. Uh, GOAC members who do have a conflict of interest are not uh, permitted to speak on, speak on those projects. So we'll start the discussion with the first proposed project, and after all members have made their comments on that project, we'll move on to the second and so on. And I'll be taking notes in the comments section that I made that I made in this uh, sheet here. So the comment sections here. Uh, after discussing the four four projects, we'll prioritize the projects from one to four, with one being the highest priority, and then I'll average the numbers, and it'll give a prioritized list. And we, the GA members, will be uh, able to give their final comments before making a, the official funding recommendation to the ADWR director. And before we begin, before we begin the presentations, we're happy to take any questions. Hearing no questions, we'll go ahead and move on. I will now ask our first presenter, Kit Kent Haugerland, 
of the Arizona Department of Transportation to begin with his uh, proposal. Thank you, Chairman Holt. And uh, thank you for allowing me to present to you this morning. My name is Kent Halgerud. I work for the Department of Transportation. I'm Groundwater Protection Coordinator. Uh, I've been there for about eight years. Before that, I was with DEQ for 14 years as a regulator and field inspector. Next slide, please. What we want to address is the overdraft of the Little Tino subbasin. And we're going to indirectly meet the grant goal by recharging stormwater to the Little Chino subbasin. Uh, to achieve safe yield by 2025, the AV, uh, Prescott AMA needs to expand its efforts to maximize renewable water supplies. The, we're in a current situation of overdraft on the aquifer, and we feel that this project could aid in uh, replenishing water to the aquifer. Our proposal is to examine dry wells to recharge stormwater. Next slide. A dry well is uh, defined in statute as a bored, drilled, or driven shaft or hole. Depth is greater than it is width, and it's designed and constructed specifically for the disposal of stormwater. This is in our statute that it's designed for the disposal of stormwater. Dry wells are used for management and enhanced aquifer recharge, but only limited research has been conducted. This project will include the design and construction of two dry wells over the Little Chino subbasin to study the effectiveness of using dry wells in conjunction with a series of connected catch basins to recharge stormwater to the Little Chino subbasin. Data regarding recharge will be tracked and recorded. This is not part of any existing project, but will be at the site location of a 2010 Highway 89 widening project located on the south side of Chino Valley. Next slide. Currently, over 60,000 dry wells are registered in the state with ADEQ. Only 4% are outside the Phoenix area. This may change, though, as stormwater becomes recognized as an underutilized resource, and dry wells begin to be a means of, for aquifer recharge rather than simply stormwater management disposal tool. Next slide. wanted to uh, go over a study that was done in Chandler, uh, Ch city of Chandler outside Phoenix uh, is an example of a city with a rapidly growing population. Dry wells are used intensively for stormwater management. A 2005 study was examined, the groundwater recharge to groundwater recharge impact of dry wells. The study found that pre-development recharge in the Chandler area was 191 acre feet per year. After 3,763 dry wells were installed within the city boundaries at virtually every apartment complex and, and uh, park and draining 1,400 acres of stormwater basins, post-development recharge through the dry wells was estimated at 2,100 to 3,100 acre feet per year in an average rain year. That's more than 10 times the annual recharge. Clearly, dry wells are significant, if not a primary source of groundwater recharge within the Phoenix AMA to which Chandler belongs. Next slide. ADOT has a uh, is, is familiar with dry wells. We're, uh, has, we have experience. We have about 65 dry wells around the state. Most of them are in the Phoenix area. We know how to maintain them. Uh, and we also know how to do the landscaping associated with dry wells and uh, maintain those areas. Next slide. This image is a picture of the proposed site. Uh, this is where the 89 
widening project is, was located in 2010 on the south side of Chino Valley. It extended for about 2.3 miles along Highway 89, widened it from two lanes to four lanes. This, the two yellow pins on this image show the proposed site of the dry wells, and that's due from a, taken from a drainage study that said that this was probably the, the most likely place to put uh, for, the, for the most advanced amount of uh, recharge that we could expect. The white arrows on the drawing show the direction to the northeast of stormwater flow in this area. The project will entail a, connecting a series of existing stormwater detention basins that collect water flow from SR 89 alongside the highway here in the town of Chino Valley and divert that water directly to the subsurface above the water table through dry wells. Most of the water collected in the roadside basins will be able to make it to the water table with minimal loss to soil, vegetation, or air. Recharge can occur in weeks instead of years after, after a rain event. Evaporative losses will be minimized. This project will indirectly conserve water in the Prescott AMA through the recharge of stormwater to the aquifer. Once this methodology is refined for local conditions, more dry wells can be installed in locations throughout the AMA, increasing the volume of water recharge to the aquifer with every new location. Next slide. This slide is a topo taken from the drainage study completed by Arcadis for ADOT in 2005. It's kind of a busy slide, but I w just wanted to give you an idea WS off one, if you can see that section, is uh, the site where the dry wells will be located. It's about 0.67 square miles of drainage area. Arcadis drainage summary in the lower left-hand corner of this page states that uh, they projected runoff post improvements, which are already in the ground now from the 2010 project, to be 780 feet cubed per second, which is 64.5 acre feet per hour in a 25 year, six hour event. That was the event we had information for and what I wanted to share with you today. So 64.5 acre feet is a lot of water that we could do something with. Next slide. This is just shows the uh, area is mainly residential, no industrial or pollutant hazards in the, in the immediate area. There is a gas station about 800 meters to the south, which is not considered a threat. On this project, data will be collected and maintained for storm events, flows, infiltration rate, volume, and groundwater depth below ground surface. In addition, water quality will be monitored at the dry well and also at the aquifer. Stormwater will be sampled at the dry well during regular intervals to assess the need for maintenance. All samples will be analyzed for potential contaminants consistent with highway runoff. Next slide. This is the design of the proposed dry well uh, from Torrent Resources. Uh, it's a dual compartment, which is better for areas in paved that are paved and getting uh, some first flush uh, constituents. This dry well has a, on the left-hand side, a small uh, inflow basin that's a sedimentation basin. Uh, the flow goes through the pipe to the second chamber and flows into the second chamber, which is much deeper and is also a sedimentation basin. Water fills that that area up and uh, flows into a screened injection pipe, which goes down deeper into the subsurface, as deep as 180 feet, closer to the aquifer to discharge the water. The, uh, a meter can be installed in between the two uh, chambers for measurement of recharge to the groundwater. Regular maintenance will be performed. Next slide. 
costs. We're going to take the existing drainage study that was done in 2005 and have our hydros at ADOT do an analysis on it. Uh, development of the site we can do in-house. We're experienced with landscaping. Uh, drywall construction will be done through torrent resources. Monitoring and reporting will be done through the environmental planning at uh, ADOT and maintenance will be completed by ADOT and Torrent. Next slide. Drywalls are a viable method of groundwater recharge. It has been proven and we may be able to reduce the volume of overdraft in the Little Chino uh, area by, by this method. Partnering opportunities could be explored with adjacent municipal county and other potential stakeholders to cost share the installation and maintenance of the infrastructure. Once this method is quantified for local infiltration rates, the methodology can be leveraged with developers and builders to assist with their 100 year assured water supply or make it a condition of the building permit. Municipalities with an MS4 permit for discharging stormwater could be encouraged through their permit requirements to consider incorporating dry wells, low impact development. This method of aquifer recharge will improve the ability of Prescott AMA to achieve safe yield by eliminating excess evaporation and attenuation. Further, it can encourage growth and development through partnering and incentives offered to developers and builders to install these systems, create jobs through the need for maintenance and response and reduce the likelihood of vectors breeding in stagnant stormwater pools. And with that, I'd like to uh, close. Uh, I do have studies, if anyone is interested, that show that uh, there have been no effects shown to uh, be a detriment to the aquifer water quality. Uh, and with that, I'd like to close with questions. Thank you for your presentation, Kent. So uh, do members have any questions of the applicant? Uh, Larry? Uh, no question. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. A, a common question. Uh, the water level in that area is right at, right around 350 feet down. So, uh, uh, how far are you proposing to be above that water level so we have some sand filtering before the water actually uh, the stormwater actually reaches the aquifer and then the the second question is uh, we have estimated recharge data in your presentation but do you have any uh, data on on a, an actual aquifer level coming up uh, because, uh, uh, a lot of aquifers will have like a clay overburden that sort of seals that aquifer and water is actually getting into the aquifer instead of over that clay overburden. Those would be my two, uh, I guess, questions and comments to Kent. <clears throat> okay, yeah, The uh, let me start with the first one, the uh, torrent resources in Stalls, dry wells, it has to be, uh, the injection well has to terminate at least 10 feet above the water supply. It also has to go down into an area of uh, 10 feet of unconsolidated material, sand, or uh, some type of area where it will drain. Okay, so uh, did that answer your first question? Uh, yes, sir, it did. We, at least we know it'll be at least 10 feet above the water level. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. yes. They, what the estimate that they gave me based on uh, well information that we looked at in the area, I, I've seen wells that say that water is 230 feet deep in that immediate area. Um, we've asked well drillers about the uh, geology of the underground and also gotten bore logs from Torrent with, with similar uh, geology where they've installed dry wells where they've had success. Okay. The, the, the second question, 
uh, a actual data on the aquifer level coming up. Uh, do you have any of that? In the study in, Ch in uh, Chandler, I, I do not have that information. That's, that's an interesting question and one I would like to look into further. Great, thank you. Thank you. And Bob, did you have any questions? No. Thank you. Kennedy, do we have any questions or comments from the public? We currently have no questions or comments from the public in the chat. If there are no further questions for Kent, we'll move on to our second presentation, which is the Territorial Early Childhood Education Center Water Management Planning. And I believe our presenter is Cindy Daniels. Planning Grant for Territorial Early Childhood Center. We'll be chairman of the parent teacher organization, Gina Graham, and Cindy Chana, the parent volunteer. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't get to introduce myself earlier because unfortunately I did not know how to unmute my mic, but it is done now as long as you can hear me. You guys hear me okay? We can hear you. Awesome. Okay. Hi, my name is Gina Graham and I am a preschool teacher at Territorial Early Childhood Center and I'm also the president of the PTO. Uh, this is Kim Shonick. I'm a parent volunteer. My son is going into the second grade this year, hopefully soon, um, and working with Gina on this project. Some of you may also know me. I work with the Nature Conservancy as our virtual program director. So I'm here today, though, as a parent volunteer with our wonderful school. Okay, next slide, please. As a parent and a teacher, I know how important outs outside play is for children. It gives them a chance to get out of the classroom, exercise, socialize with their friends, use imaginative play, and soak up the sunshine. Being outside also allows kids to learn about nature and the environment. Here at Territorial, we have over 500 students. They start as early as three, year old, three years old in our preschool class and go on to up to second grade. Next slide, please. As the PTO president, my first um, duty, I should say, was to ask the families what kind of improvements they wanted for our school. And over half of them had concerns about our playground. And as you can see on the pictures, there are a lot of concerns. Um, no grass area to have safe play, not enough shaded area. Most of the playground is made out of really fine sand and dirt, so it causes a lot of skinned knees and elbows. Um, just not very appealing. We no longer have a PE program, so there's really no time for the kids to get exposed to any type of organized um, sports or games or anything like that. Because, of course, as you can see, there's really no area to play on. Um, also, several of the areas around our playground get, once it rains, they turn into mud pits. And even if it's not raining, our kids still can't go outside because it's way too muddy for them to go. Um, our facilities crew attempted to plant some grass in an area on our playground, but due to poor drainage and a failed attempt to keep the children off that area, unfortunately it wasn't successful. As a PTO president, I, we came up, along with the PTO and the, the parents, we decided that we were gonna go ahead and start raising money to put turf down on our playground. Um, not only was it expensive, but we came up with that it was a very small fix to a much bigger problem. We decided to ask for funding for in, to engineer our playground for better use, not just for now, but to have a base for future projects. Parents and teachers were overly excited to hear about our plans. Teachers will be able to go outside with their classrooms and have educational classes in agriculture and science. Parents love the idea for a safer place for the kids to play and a better looking playground. Also, if we involve, in our, if we involve our students in this project, it will give them a private, private ownership 
and the excitement to be able to tell their parents, hey, this is what we accomplished. Kim? Okay, great. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, just a few key points in case you're not familiar with the school. Valley um, does a preschool through second grade with the Territorial Childhood uh, Center. It's a 15 acre campus, so it's a, a fairly large parcel within the, the Chino Valley area. Um, it's obviously part of the active management area, which you guys are all very familiar with. We have about 500 to 600 kids who attend. And that means parents picking up and dropping off daily, as well as coming in for other events. Uh, the school receives water from the City of Prescott Water Company. So we'll go to the next slide and I'll show you a couple maps. Um, the one on the left just shows the whole active management area. The dots are pumping centers um, and then Chino Valley is there at the north. On the right hand side, you see the map of Chino Valley with the green dot being our school. Um, located kind of in the middle of Chino. So we think this is a really important area where we can demonstrate um, different aspects of conservation and wise water management to meet our local needs as well as our community needs. We'll go to the next slide. When we came, you know, we started like in this side, we, let's replace the turf. And what we started talking about was, you know, turf takes a lot of water, it takes management, our facilities was concerned about how to maintain that, but also this flooding issue. So the picture here is our current stormwater uh, recharge basin that's on site, it's in front of the school, and you see cars behind it. Those are the pickup line for the, the kids. So I actually just learned this year after two years of driving to the school that that was our on site recharge basin. So what we'd like to be able to do is increase people's awareness, but we'd also like to direct that stormwater into this recharge basin. So instead of having it muddy up our playground, let's get it over into a basin where it can do some recharge. And uh, Kent did a great job of talking about recharge and how that can benefit our aquifer. So I won't go deep into that. Um, so we think this is a great opportunity to look at these four components. Um, we'll go to the next slide. Um, and we think that within the Prescott Active Management Area, there's some really key ways that we can contribute to the overall goal. So long-term site planning, whether it's a 15 acre parcel or a really large parcel, we think long-term planning is critical to success. Um, conservation of our resource, so putting in a playground and using a lot of turf that takes up a lot of water is not a great choice for our community. We live in a low water use state. And so we want to do um, artificial turf um, and we want high quality artificial turf. And then I mentioned the aquifer storage through passive recharge. We estimate about 10 acre feet per year. Um, this could be different. Um, and then education and communication. We wanna make sure that we're telling our kids about what we're doing there and engaging them, but also talking to their families who live within the AMA and outside the AMA. We have many members of our school who are in the Paulden area. And I see someone um, put in the um, chat over here about the installation of dry wells. And I think that's a great point. I think dry wells is definitely something we could think about. And that's why we think it's really critical to do the long-term site planning. So the obvious choice is just to keep going with our, our current stormwater basin and put water in, which does increase evaporation over doing those dry well type projects. So this is why it's really critical that a school gets these resources and get some um, ability to do this planning with experts because you know Gina and Cindy are amazing at educating our children and bringing them up, but they also need resources um, to do this kind of planning. So I think that's a great um, comment there and something really to think about um, in this project is we can definitely consider dry wells and incorporate that if that makes sense on our site and that makes sense to the experts that we want to work with. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the next uh, slide, which I think is actually our last slide. Uh, a couple things here. Um, the picture on the left is actually kids in the first grade class that made seed balls this year, and we talked about native seeds and water. So these types of 
projects to help us with, um, you know, making our school a prettier place, making it more attractive for our students and families and using less water. So we want to be able to plan um, and engage students in ways like that as well. Um, and then a nice school fundraiser we did, we had planned to have quite a few more. Um, and I think uh, once we get to go back to school, we'll, we'll do those as well. So I think that's all to say, Gina, did you want to add anything before we go to questions? No, I just want, well, I just wanted to say that we're all very excited to get this project funded and started. It means so much to our students, parents and staff to have a fun, safe and educational playground. Thank you, ladies. We appreciate your presentation. Do we have any questions from the members of the applicants? Mr. Tarkowski? Uh, he's temporarily out of the room. Thank you, John. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I should have known other than Mr. Tarkowski's painting booths. And uh, Bob, do you have any questions of the applicant? I just wanted to make a comment that uh, I appreciate uh, the fact that you guys have some skin in the game, that you, you know, that you have some in-kind uh, contributions to this project. It's very nice of you to do that. Um, I, I have uh, a little bit of concern about any long-term effects this might have, and if you could explain, it was there any. Uh, scientific calculation on the acre feet, the acre feet of water you might be able to save up to the 10 acre feet. How did you calculate what that might end up being in any particular uh, fiscal year or, or standard year? So that's a rough approximation based on the site size and the drainage layout um, and average rainfall on the site. It is not an overly, um, well calculated number. I mean, it's just really based on our site area, our area to capture and what we can run into the basin. So that doesn't necessarily mean that all of that would get into the aquifer, um, especially with passive infiltration from a basin. One of the things that we'd like to really be able to focus on is that long term plan where we can bring in experts to help us calculate those numbers and better understand what that is and how to maximize that. Um, you know, we're a school project, so this is not the thing that we all have um, the expertise in. And so without the ability to bring in some engineers and some experts, um, you know, that's just a rough estimate right now. And I think that's why we chose to put quite a bit of money towards a site design. Um, when we looked at the budget, you know, we really wanted to say, let's put all of our money towards making turf because that's what we really want as parents and as teachers. Um, but we also really want to make sure that we're setting the school up for success in the long term. And we really want to focus on that site design, maximizing um, those numbers. So this is a little bit different in that we don't have um, big numbers to say this is what we can recharge um, because we don't necessarily have that information yet. And we hope that this is a small step where we're starting with our school and then maybe this is something other schools and other larger sites within um, the area could take advantage of as well. So kind of um, a different way to think about it rather than saying we have all the information. This is really we need more information to be able to answer those kinds of questions. Okay, thank you. You know, I, I understand that and I thank you for uh applying i it 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 looks to me like you guys have a a long term 20 plus year concept of what you want to do to to help uh recharge water in the in the, the little chino and i appreciate that very much yeah we look forward to partnering with others too um you know i think this is just kind of our first step in trying to figure out how to go forward so thank you thanks jim Kennedy, do we have any questions or comments from the public regarding this presentation? We 
have no questions or comments regarding uh, this presentation, but we do have some comments about the previous presentation, but I will read those once we get to our discussion portion. Okay, thank you. So our third presentation this morning is Town of Prescott Valley, Water Smart Customer Portal. And I believe John Munderlow is going to be our presenter. Uh, thank you, Jim. This is John Munderlow. I'm the Water Resource Manager with the Town of Prescott Valley. Um, along helping me today with the presentation uh, for questions, um, I have uh, <clears throat> Scott Keith and Mark Wusson, our uh, managers with the Town of Prescott Valley to help manage the water systems. Uh, we also have uh, Brandon Sherman with the Water Smart um, software um, to go over some of the uh, portions, some of the slides. Um, so <clears throat> this request is uh, simply for um, some software. Uh, it's a computer application that would help the water provider, oh, I'm sorry, next slide please, um, and the water customer maximize water conservation within the Town of Prescott Valley system. Uh, we've selected this because it interfaces seamlessly and has uh, a long-term uh, history of success with the FlexNet real-time meters that the Town of Prescott Valley has installed on about 70% of our um, customer meters. Um, and what the software does is when it's combined with these real-time water meters is it uh, notices um, and, you know, from the reporting of those real-time water meters, uh, near real-time leak notifications, uh, that can go out uh, right away to the, to the customer and to the town, uh, rather than waiting for kind of the monthly bill, the monthly read of those meters. Um, we also have that interfaces with this online water budgeting uh, that connects the water customers with their accounts, with their water use data, uh, helps them uh, manage their and budget their water use so that they can budget their uh, water bills. Uh, and then, you know, we also have conservation outreach through various downloadable apps, um, goes to your phone, online portals, um, and then, you know, direct outreach to water customers who may not have the uh, high-tech end of, uh, of all of this on their phones. Uh, next, please. In addition, the, uh, the other benefits for the town that aren't ne necessarily directly related to water conservation uh, would include some online bill pay um, that gives customers an easier way, an easier place to go to uh, do their online bill pay. Uh, we have notifications through text or email for say um, specific uh, neighborhood outages uh, that may occur or line maintenance, something like that. Um, and it also is gonna reduce kind of the customer interface, the direct interface, the walk-ins and that thing, sort of thing, uh, because we'll be doing a lot more through the electronic service. Um, to kind of give you a, a view of what this um, looks like, uh, if Brandon Sherman, I believe you're on here, if he could take the next couple of slides and kind of go through what this WaterSmart portal looks like. Uh, so Brandon, and please go to the next slide. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, so Brandon Sherman uh, again, and this is what the utility staff would see as a portion of our platform because it does have both a customer facing and a utility dashboard. So the utility staff at Prescott Valley would have access to basically a summation of information from the FlexNet network, their billing system, and that gives them access to analytics around consumption. They can set thresholds for leak detection and be able to enable messaging to all of their customers. Uh, they also get information around water budgeting, uh, and a lot of engagement related information. And from this, they also have access to customer information on the individual level. And they can also put together timely targeted messages to groups of customers. So customers that are habitually over uh, a threshold of water usage, uh, if they're trending towards high water bills, it's a way to easily engage and pick a delivery method to make sure you get total engagement for the customers. Uh, next slide, please. This is the customer facing dashboard. So from this customers get access to information around billing, daily usage, uh, there's alerts and notifications that can be set up and everything here is directed towards actionable insight. So we can pull historical information for these customers. 
get upwards of 10 years of consumption data so they can start to see trends, start to make uh, budgeted information around not only their billing, but also consumption. And we also provide uh, social comparisons for them as well too. So they can see how they compare to other users uh, from a similar household, a similar number of occupants, along with a number of different reminders that they can be set uh, and configured from a utility standpoint. Uh, next slide. Along with this, so our core uh, business focus when we uh, came into the whole portal space was around conservation. So that's our bread and butter. And we have configurable uh, information that can be set around recommended actions customers can take. Uh, there's rebate information that can be customized by Prescott Valley to drive customers towards uh, rebates that they put uh, out for customer outreach. Along with the social comparisons I mentioned, you can see on the right, there's a water score that we do for each individual customer uh, that is set based upon assumptions we're making, taking from the county assessor's office on occupants. And then individual users have the opportunity to update that information with specific information around irritable land, number of occupants, uh, whether or not they have a pool. So they get really customized information about their usage to see how efficient they are. And then they're pointed in actions that can help make them uh, more efficient and reduce that water usage. Uh, next slide. And then finally, we have uh, a closed loop leak alerting system, which is unique in the space. So regardless of if a customer creates a portal, they will be able to receive notifications and not only get a notification, they might have a continuous use, but also be taken through uh, a, a, a dynamic leak alert wizard that'll take them through a series of ways to help detect whether or not that's a leak or also be able to rule that out. So from an analytics standpoint, we push all this information back to Prescott Valley so they can see whether a leak was ruled out, whether a customer has found a leak, uh, so they have analytics on the back end, and then also we provide customers with a detailed view of their usage so they can start to see those trends, spot where there is possible overuse, and be able to make some adjustments. So uh, again, something we make available to all the customers, regardless of if they've upgraded to those uh, FlexNet meters or if they're still on the manual read meters before, and then again, available to all customers. Thank you, John. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Brandon. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. So uh, working with uh, the WaterSmart folks um, based off of their experience with uh, application and other systems, including I think Scottsdale and other places in Arizona, um, applied to the Prescott Valley system. Uh, we're estimating uh, water savings through um, more direct and more timely addressing the customer water leaks, uh, a lot of conservation through use of the customer portal. Uh, and then, you know, there's a lot of uh, consistent conservation outreach. Um, so the, the total savings, uh, we're thinking about 48 million gallons a year. That's 100, around 150 acre feet per year. Um, and the, the chart on the bottom shows Prescott Valley's um, success at uh, addressing water conservation throughout our system. Uh, we've driven down water use per person. Uh, to, uh, to a recent number of around 95 gallons per person per day. And that is a pretty tight number uh, for the, for the you know, people in our region. Um, getting that down another two and a half gallons per capita per day, I think will be um, pretty significant. Uh, next, please. Um, so just kind of showing the, uh, the contributions and, the, and how the project works. So, uh, the application for about $77,000 from the GUAC would pay for the software and its uh, installation, uh, the IT uh, aspects of that. Um, and then the, the table on your right then shows Prescott Valley's uh, commitments. Um, we have a little under 7,000 meters that are the high-tech meters. They just need the uh, equipment that does the, the direct reporting to the radio towers. Uh, so that would be kind of the largest commitment moving forward to get all of the remainder of our meters, of our 22 or 23,000 meters converted, and, uh, and and so on. And then, you know, continuing the platform costs over time. Here we have five years of commitment displayed, but obviously once we get this in and um, our customers uh, get, you know, used to it and involved in it, um, you know, that, that's an ongoing commitment from the town. Um, next, please. Uh, and, and again, you know, the method for reporting uh, results uh, and, and uh, 
monitoring results is basically already in place. Obviously, this is about metering and uh, meter delivery. So that all goes into our annual reports with ADWR. Obviously, there will be grant reports that, um, um, you know, display directly uh, the results of this uh, software and the program as we get it going. That's the end of my slides. Thank you, John and Brandon. Do uh, any members have any questions uh, regarding this presentation? Uh, is Larry back? Uh, I can't uh, go ahead and comment uh, uh, on that because of the uh, conflict of interest. Thank you. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting system. Uh, I was just wondering if you're if you uh, leave your hose running answer the phone if you don't get a, a a mysterious message that says Chris your water is running <laughs> <laughs> you, you may Chris um, particularly you um, we'll, we'll, if you were on our system we'd really monitor you <laughs> but yeah that's a uh, I've I have known folks that have had a water leak that they were unaware of until the billing cycle and then they came unglued. How 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 could I have used that much water? So uh, I I can see that this is a uh, a neat a neat method of uh, of uh, you know looking over your past water usage and if it spikes up you know alerting the customer before before he gets that massive water bill um anyway i, I hate to admit you've got a good idea there <laughs> thank you chris bob do you have any questions i do i just want to make a couple of comments i i agree chris i think it has a little bit of a big brother kind of a feel to it but uh i like i like this project because First of all, the town is matching uh, the grants and is going to have a continuing future support of the program. That's, that's a very good thing. I think it will help identify where there are leaks and where there's excessive water use uh, in, in the community, which is also a good thing. Uh, it involves the entire population of water users in the town of Prescott Valley, uh, which I think is a, is a great idea. And there's, there's an active saving aspect of water saving for our AMA in this project uh, to the tune of about up to maybe 150 acre feet of water um, annually. So I, I think this is a very good project. That's Thank it. you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I had a couple of questions. I wanted to make sure that I understood that uh, about 70% of the meters in the town are the high-tech flex net meters. Are the uh, customers only with the high-tech meters going to be enrolled in this program or all customers? Um, I'll take a cut at this. Um, otherwise, Scott Keith may want to come in. Um, all customers will be be enrolled, uh, regardless of what meter type they're on, as we move all meters into the FlexNet program. That will occur over a, a couple of years. It's about a two-year. About, about a two-year window to get that done. <clears throat> um, but they but they can all be enrolled in the program, um, but they won't. The lower tech meters, which are currently the uh, the drive-by reporting meters, um, they would they would not get the real time notifications until they come on to line. Um, Scott or um, or Brandon, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, this is Brandon. Uh, you're right. All customers get access to it. All customers get access to a portal and then all customers are automatically enrolled in the leak alerting. But you're right. It's just a frequency with which we can alert. It's going to be a little lower with uh, the drive by meters. Um, but everybody will have access to this information. They'll have access to the messaging uh, that Prescott Valley can provide. Okay. And then the other question, which was alluded to by uh, a couple of the members, and that is whether or not 
other communities that have used this program have experienced any customer resistance. Uh, that it just that they're uncomfortable with such instantaneous information about them uh, being collected. So I, this is Brandon again. I I can jump in. Um, Customers have the ability to opt out of any of this messaging. They can set all their communication preferences. So when they initially get that first alert or notification, they can opt out of receiving that. They also have the ability to set their own thresholds for leak alerting. So if you do have a customer who's a habitually high water user who doesn't want to receive water notices and is okay with the additional billing, they can set higher thresholds. They can set how they want to have those messages delivered or just completely opt out of the messaging altogether. So with every message we deliver, there is an opportunity to no longer receive those. Um, so there are options for customers who don't want to receive that kind of messaging. Kennedy, do we have any questions or comments from members of the public regarding this presentation? We have no questions or comments in the chat. Thank you. Our fourth presentation is rainwater harvesting for aquifer recharge. This is provided to us by the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition. And I believe our presenter on this presentation is Mr. Munderloh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, changing hat. Um, acting here now as the chairman of the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition TAC, Technical Advisory Committee, um, <clears throat> to, uh, to present this. Uh, so this is brought to you by, by the organization that is made up of the local governments. Um, the GUAC has worked with uh, the coalition before on, on in particular, a, a previous version of this project. <clears throat> So the, um, I think it's important to kind of bring up the um, importance of this project in particularly our AMA uh, for anybody that may have been involved in the Governor's Water Augmentation and in Innovation Council meetings. Um, they've recently issued a draft <clears throat> paper on exempt wells, and this is to go to the, uh, uh, to the main committee. <clears throat> but in that paper, uh, after studying the issue of exempt wells in AMAs in Arizona, um, I, I've included a quote here of how important addressing exempt wells in the AMA, in the Prescott AMA is, and that we're kind of the leading edge of exempt well issues in uh, Arizona. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, again, in our AMA, um, we have approximately 13,000 private wells. Um, they are actually a substantial part of the Prescott AMA groundwater budget. Uh, they're not currently part of the, um, the safe yield equation, addressing safe yield in the Prescott AMA. And we've tried numerous times over the past couple of decades uh, to find some sort of legislative support for maybe regulatory policy or something of the nature and, and have not received uh, or, or gained any traction with legislative support for dealing with exempt wells. And, and the problem continues to grow, especially as uh, assured water supply resources in the AMA uh, grow thinner, harder to get. Uh, we see the exempt well community uh, a, a growing uh, issue. Uh, so, <clears throat> instead of dealing with it from a regulatory approach, uh, the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition looked at this as a voluntary approach that may over time uh, address these exempt wells issue of overdraft, their share of overdraft, and it's simple. Um, this is to capture rainwater from the rooftop and put it back directly into the aquifer. Uh, next slide, please. So this is, this is our first pilot project. Uh, if you'll recall, the uh, GUAC spent some uh, water management assistance program money on this as did the coalition, Yavapai County, and uh, Prescott Valley. In uh, 2018, we built a little pilot project uh, near Highway 69 and Fane Road. Um, the, the little map in the bottom corner of your, 
uh, slide shows about where we are right across from the Maverick. We're using one half of that storage building roof, um, which is about 2,500 square feet, approximately the same size as a standard um, family house. Um, and we've run this project for two years now. Um, so we found that over that two-year period, we we're able to capture and recharge 50% of the water that would be estimated to be pumped from a private well. The reason why this is more effective than a typical rainwater system, uh, typical systems are limited by uh, the storage capacity above ground storage capacity, uh, whether they're 55 gallon barrels or even large cisterns, um, <clears throat> you just can't afford to build enough above ground storage. Next, please. Um, <clears throat> just to conclude on our pilot project, um, we found that it is less costly and more easy to manage <clears throat> than your traditional above ground storage systems. Uh, you can harvest significantly <clears throat> more water because you don't tap out your storage. Uh, if, essentially, when you're using the aquifer for storage, uh, the amount of water you can capture and recharge is unlimited. Um, and <clears throat> something that uh, we've observed is that people who tend to put in the above ground storage systems for harvested rainwater, um, you know, it's not a water quality, water of quality that you're going to drink. So they use it on landscaping. And we find that when they have, especially the larger cisterns, uh, that they put in more landscaping and essentially negate the uh, the benefits they might have from harvesting rainwater uh, by putting in a lot more plants. Then you in a, enter a dry period like we're in right now, May and June, we haven't received any rain for a couple months. <clears throat> and then they find that they then have to tap in uh, to the city supplies to keep their landscaping alive until, you know, the, the monsoon rains come. Um, after presenting the results of our pilot project to the Upper Verde Coalition Board, uh, these are the Board of Directors, these are elected officials from our local jurisdictions, uh, they, they expressed a huge degree of interest in incorporating these concepts in future building plans, uh, especially for individuals that <clears throat> will be building uh, with a water supply depending on exempt wells. Uh, but they, they expressed some um, trepidation that we had not done enough testing of the project, uh, the concepts, that there are additional design elements that could be put into place, and that um, we should probably gain additional um, um, public outreach, uh, pu public uh, um, outreach and education through this program so that people really understand where we're going. So <clears throat> as a result of that, um, next, please. Next slide, please. As a result of that, we looked at um, what these different design elements could incorporate um, so that we can look at um, all these different concepts and, and eventually build this into uh, future building programs. Um, and so our proposal is to uh, incorporate one of these systems on the Rolly Simmons Adult Center. Uh, that center um, receives a lot of traffic. Anybody that's uh, local to our area will probably be familiar with it. Currently, that center uses passive rainwater harvesting to water landscape plants during the summer months. Uh, our proposal would be to incorporate a winter rainwater harvesting plan that would then take that winter rain and recharge it. Uh, we'd use what's called a leach chamber, where our old um, project essentially used um, what you might call a standard uh, leach field. Uh, these leach chambers are much less expensive uh, to install. There's a picture of one on the slide there. Uh, they're just kind of these big plastic PVC caps. Um, you, you excavate and you drop them in. Uh, you can bring in as many as you need on one pickup truck. Uh, and uh, they just create a chamber below ground that allows you to leach the water into the subsurface. Uh, the Chino Valley La Library, which um, we would, um, it currently has a passive system uh, for watering uh, landscaping out front on the south end of the building, um, but we'd put in a vertical French drain design because we find that not all properties have enough space for, for kind of these lateral systems. 
Um, so this would be a deeper hole with a smaller footprint. A dry well. Kind of a dry well, right. Um, no, notably though, the difference I think between this and dry wells is um, aside from filtration, uh, because it's rainwater directly from the rooftop, um, there's, there's no dry well permitting issues, um, and there's really no water quality issues other than trying to get rid of some of the leaf debris or whatever that might accumulate in your gutter. So you need the filtration. Uh, the third place would be uh, the Chino uh, Valley Community Center. Uh, we'd put in an active system, capture a little bit of rainwater in a, a cistern uh, above ground, uh, do some landscape watering, uh, and then also incorporate the leach, leach chamber. Uh, we would incorporate a number of different filtration systems. Uh, that has been uh, probably the highest level of maintenance on our existing pilot project is uh, dealing with the um, pre-filtration. So there's a number of designs out there that we would try on these three systems. Next slide, please. Um, just a quick uh, overview of the Rolly Simmons Adult Center. Um, we would uh, basically incorporate a portion of that adult center and put it in the recharge area uh, noted on your slide there. Um, <clears throat> so you'd split the winter and, and summer rainfall uh, about half and half. So the winter rain, about 66,000 gallons a year, would go into that recharge area. Um, again, it's a lot of um, a lot of public goes through there, so we'd have a lot of education, a lot of outreach on site, as well as our education and outreach through uh, brochures, how to do um, how to manuals, uh, stuff on our website. Uh, the remaining uh, summer rain would go towards landscaping uh, that's in place and currently receiving water from the rooftop. Uh, next, please. Uh, that's the Chino Valley Library site. Uh, we'd be using a portion of that rooftop and the recharge area uh, noted in the upper left uh, would actually probably be a much smaller foot, footprint than what's shown there, probably about a 10 foot by 10 foot area. Um, so again, capturing uh, rainwater and putting it into the ground through a vertical chamber. Um, you can see on the south side of the building at the bottom, <clears throat> that landscaping is currently watered from that rooftop. So they already have, Chino, town of Chino Valley already has <clears throat> um, uh, some signage and stuff outside of that building to denote that. Now we would uh, just add to that. Uh, next, please. And finally, on the Chino Valley Community Center, um, this would be a little bit more complicated type of use from the roof, but uh, the blue roof area would go into uh, a cistern or, uh, you know, uh, a, a barrel of some sort, uh, and then they'd be metered out to water the landscaping. Uh, the rest of it would go into the into direct recharge. And again, all of these buildings have a lot of public um, involvement at the sites. Uh, next, please. So our first task, um, you know, doing the site work, getting the design of some of the building permits from the various agencies. These buildings are owned by either the city of Prescott or town of Chino Valley. They are both Upper Verde Coalition members um, as part of our application. I think we demonstrated uh, their, their willingness to uh, have these facilities modified uh, for constructing these projects. Uh, we'd have some construction costs, obviously, you have to construct it and support for construction. Uh, we're do, doing the project monitoring uh, through our first uh, project, our pilot project. We demonstrated a one-to-one -one ratio between the amount of rainfall that falls on the roof, um, on the roof area, um, goes right into the ground. Uh, we actually metered that for a couple of years on that site. Um, and then probably the most important part of this is once we have this broader uh, range of technologies, um, doing that outreach and developing first incentive programs for new exempt well owners moving forward. Um, and uh, of course, any existing well owners that want to voluntarily, this is very important, voluntarily re retrofit their systems um, so that they can um, capture that rainwater, get it in the ground, and basically offset roughly half of their total pumping uh, is pretty significant. Uh, next, please. Um, I think we pretty much covered this. Uh, Long-term benefits, uh, helping reach safe yield. Basically, 
looking towards future exempt wells um, being a low impact or maybe no impact uh, to the aquifer type of pumping. There is some caution. We can't put these systems everywhere. Um, they may not be appropriate where you have a lot of clay soils or maybe high water tables. Um, so, you know, we wouldn't really expect to see them go in on a regular basis in the town of Prescott Valley. Um, there's so much clay soil here. Um, maybe, again, not within the city of Prescott, um, at least, you know, the downtown area um, or, or near the downtown area um, because of some of the higher water tables. Essentially, the whole city of Prescott's a rainwater harvesting project anyway. Everything runs into Watson and Will. Um, but over the broader part of the county, a broad, broader part of the AMA in the county, uh, where you have the large lots, the exempt wells, uh, we think that these systems will work well. And we'll demonstrate that through this project. Uh, final slide, please. Uh, so the, the next steps once we get through um, this is to uh, work more with the local jurisdictions in the coalition uh, to incorporate these into the building design standards uh, so that these uh, relatively small amounts that we're putting in the ground per site broadcast throughout many, many sites. Um, so, you know, it would be a standard for new homes on new wells in the AMA, basically a best management practice moving forward. And, and I already said this, incentives for uh, retrofit on existing homes. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, at some point in the future, and this is uh, just for uh, kind of people to think about, uh, <clears throat> since most of these exempt wells have uh, septic systems, that uh, we should probably start looking at how to improve the water quality uh, generated through those septic systems and ways to increase recharge from those septic systems once that water quality is improved. So with that, I'll conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, John. Do any members have any questions or comments regarding that presentation? Mr. Tarkowski? I'm, I'm uh, not able to uh, uh, go ahead and comment on I understand. I understand. Chris? Uh, yes, as, as a part of the exempt well community, I'm encouraged by this uh, uh, type of thinking. I think it's wonderful for new construction and um, use sort of a similar system myself. Uh, I like the idea of getting that water into the ground as quickly as we can. So, um, yeah, we're whether we like it or not. Uh, folks are moving into this area every day, and the water or, uh, uh, usage on our aquifer, the strain on our aquifer is tremendous. We've got to get the water back in there. Thank you. May I, may I add some commentary to that, Mr. Chairman? You may. Um, Chris, when we've worked with uh, <clears throat> um, public works director and engineers with the town of Chino Valley, uh, the other element that they <clears throat> um, see a lot of hope for is some stormwater management, uh, especially in the, ch in, in the town of Chino Valley where that first flush from those monsoon rains is really coming off the rooftops. And you can really help mitigate some of that peak flow um, by getting that rooftop water down deeper into the ground and uh, slow down some of that, some of that uh, stormwater. You bet, you bet. Yeah, we've, uh, uh, we get either too much too fast or not at all. So yeah, let's get it back in the ground. Thank you. And uh, Bob, do you have any questions? Just, just a comment. I think that the, uh, uh, the public awareness aspect of this project is good if we can get, you know, the public interested in, in participating in these kind of programs. I think that the um, impact of the project itself is pretty minimal. The data I got that my little brain figured out, you, you have about a 13.2 acre feet of savings over about a 20 year period. And, and you know, it's, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with that, but it's, it's not a huge 
initial impact of uh, water savings on, in the aquifer. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Kennedy, do we have any uh, comments or uh, questions from members of the public on this presentation? Uh, no questions or comments from the public on this presentation. Thank you. Well, now after having heard all four presentations that have been submitted to receive funding, we will move on to agenda item number four, which will be a discussion of the projects uh, and uh, see if we can provide a uh, funding recommendation to the director of the Department of Water Resources. So maybe we could start with uh, comments uh, and observations from uh, Mr. Tarkowski. Well, gee, thanks, Jim. Uh, you know, there's there's one thing that occurs to me when I, I take a look at these projects, and that is uh, two of which I can't uh, uh, comment on, uh, the thanks to a piece of paper I had to send in last night. But nevertheless, uh, we have money available to uh, the Prescott AMA through a grant. In addition to that, we have some money available to us in our account based on uh, the extraction that the municipal entities end up paying on an annual basis uh, to, uh, uh, to our fund. There is, uh, uh, without very much creative thinking, an opportunity to fund three of these projects if you take grant money and then combine it with our, uh, our GUAC uh, fund. And I, I believe that there's, uh, there's an opportunity there uh, to uh, do so, just such a thing. Other than that, I, I believe the, the, all of the projects are good. I believe that uh, uh, we have some opportunity here. What, what is attractive to me is the opportunity to educate uh, as well as uh, get all of the governmental entities and communities involved uh, in uh, uh, some projects. So with that, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Is Jim saying something? I don't know. Chair Holt, this is a nav here. I just want to follow up with uh, Mr. Tarkowski comment, if if you don't mind. So it is correct. We do have about $128,000 within the withdrawal fee fund or the water management assistance program generated from withdrawal fees. So if the GOC would like to recommend using some or most or all this fund to fund some of those projects that is possible. We'll just have to specify what projects would be funded from the uh, 150,000 from the grant and what projects or portions of the projects will be funded from the withdrawal fees. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, Chris, do you have any comments or observations based on the presentations? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to uh, uh, to recommend, you know, how to disperse the funds at this point in the conversation. But uh, number one, all of them have been uh, excellent presentations. Uh, but I I feel that that uh, our our the majority of our funding needs to go to uh, the health of the aquifer first and then conservation second i realize that rubs some folks the wrong way but but uh, uh as mr noted in our last meeting we have to do something quick before uh before the uh we we reach a crisis level in the in the chino uh the little chino aquifer and for me i would like to see the majority of our funding uh, go into uh, 
uh, getting water into that aquifer and getting it in there quickly. So whenever you're whenever you're open for suggestions on you know what what ones to be funded and what amounts, I'll go ahead and throw my hat in the ring when that time comes. Okay. Yes, thank you, Chris. And uh, Bob, do you have any uh, comments or observations? I have a question for Anov. Is the the grant money is it a lose it use it or lose it proposition with the hundred fifty thousand dollars? Not necessarily, but we do hope and intend to distribute the hundred and fifty thousand in this grant cycle. If it doesn't happen in this grant cycle, we'll have to create another grant cycle, which as you see has been an involved process. So I would recommend first spending the 150,000 for the projects uh, that currently have been presented on, and then look into using some of the withdrawal fees if that is what the GAC desire to do. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim, I'm I'm ready to make my uh, recommendations uh, if if it's appropriate at this point. Um, I was going to offer a couple of comments first, and then uh, okay. we'll come back to you, Bob, and ask you for your recommendations. Uh, I did want to thank uh, all of the presenters for their presentations. I think we're extremely fortunate to have four such well thought out applications for these funds. Uh, so I just wanted to express my, uh, my gratitude in that regard. Um, I agree with a couple of the members that we have an opportunity to have, I think a significant impact on the aquifer. Uh, and I agree with Chris that uh, that's extremely important, particularly now. So those are my observations that I wanted to share. Uh, Bob, if you're ready to go ahead and make your recommendations, uh, we'd certainly be uh, interested in hearing those. Okay, thank you. I, uh, hearing what Larry had said earlier, I would recommend the uh, project for the town of Prescott Valley would be my number one recommendation to whatever the extent of funds that they've requested. The second thing would, in line, would be the Upper Verde watershed. Even though it's got a low impact, it has some pluses as far as future education and all, and I would recommend them second. Um, third would be the school uh, project because I think it will too have a, a, an impact on how people think about uh, getting water back into the aquifer. And I would recommend it up to and including if we can spend some of the, the GUAC money to go ahead and do that, what Larry was saying. And the uh, ADOT uh, project, I ha I've chosen to recuse myself from that particular project, so I can't comment on it. Okay, but I, I, Jim, could I could I comment on the uh, the ADOP project because I I am able to uh, speak to that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if, if I could, I really find the ADOP project uh, number one to be exciting and uh, number two to have a, a, a very possible huge long-term impact. And I would really like to, uh, to have uh, ADOT uh, sit down with the Upper Verde Watershed uh, Protection Coalition to, to flesh out a much larger program that would go ahead and work over, over uh, time in a relatively short period of time that with each new uh, ADOT project that there be a component of stormwater collection and injection with every one of those state highway projects and over uh, what I believe would be a fairly short period of time with the road construction we've got going on up here uh, that we could have a, a large impact and a lot of the analysis for that, uh, uh, that benefit to the aquifer will end up being information that is gleaned from some of the proposals in front of you. And with that, I'll leave it. Mr. Thank you Chair, for your comments, Larry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to mention that maybe now would be a good opportunity to follow up uh, Mr. Tarkovsky with the comments we got 
from ADOT. So Kennedy will go ahead and read that if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so the most recent comment we have um, concerning uh, Larry's comment, they said that ADOT would be open to working with the Upper, um, upper Verde Group. Uh, but before that, they said that surrounding drill locks can be used from nearby wells for subsurface information and many benefits can be gained from the dry well install project, including data that can be in, input to models, development of installation, necessary pre-installation characterization process, operation and maintenance procedures. Also, there would be the benefit of flood mitigation. It will ensure safe roadways, passage during storm movements and to preserve life and infrastructure to both the roadway and surrounding area. And that is all Ada um, has mentioned thus far. Thank you, Kennedy. So, um, Chris, would you like to share your, uh, your rankings if you're prepared to do so? Uh, you bet. I I would like to suggest the hundred thousand uh, that a requested uh, be granted. Uh, like I said, get water into our aquifer quickly and a lot of it. Uh, and secondly, uh, fifty thousand to the town of of Prescott Valley uh, uh, for their water smart portal and possibly another twenty seven from GUAC to uh, to round out that 77, I, I find it uh, pretty amazing that they're kicking in a million dollars or so uh, towards, so evidently they, they believe in the project. Um, and uh, as long as, as long as they're uh, not calling me when my sprinkler's running, I'm okay with that, so. <laughs> I was just teasing you, Jim. <laughs> So, um, make sure that I understand then. Uh, you suggested the ADOT project for the full 100,000? Yes, sir. Fully project. Fully funded. Yeah, the, the deep. And, uh, and, the, and then the town of Prescott Valley uh, for 50,000 out of the grant program. And 20, 27,000 out of the withdrawal fees. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And Larry. Yeah, uh, uh, Jim and, and fellow GOAC members, my, uh, I'm allowed to vote on two. Uh, the lowest of, of my two is the ADOT project because I believe that should be incorporated in, in uh, construction uh, programming. And then my uh, uh, highest of the two I'm able to uh, comment on is the, uh, uh, the school project. Okay. And I, and I would further like consideration that three projects be funded uh, uh, two with grant and one with uh, our withdrawal fees. Okay. Well, I'll share what I was uh, thinking. My highest rated presentation and proposal, excuse me, the highest proposal is the Town of Prescott Valley uh, Water Smart Customer Portal for the full 77,000 or, or yeah, for the full amount. We'll, we'll come to source of money in a moment. My second rated project would be the rainwater harvesting from the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition for the full 65,000. And my third rated project would be the ADOT project uh, for the full 100,000. So my recommendations, I believe, exceed the amount of money we have available in grants. So I would uh, fund the difference with uh, money in the uh, withdrawal fee. Okay. 
rough numbers, I believe that those three projects are about 242,000. We have 150,000 available in grants. So that difference then, which is I think 92,000 would be uh, made up from the withdrawal fee. Mr. Holt, if you don't mind me um, reaching back to uh, Member Marley, you rank the first two that you would like to fund. Uh, would you mind, just for the sake of ranking, provide us with your ranking for uh, the second and fourth project, which if, let's say, we could fund, which one would you prefer after we fund the two first um, projects you recommended? So currently we have the Territorial Early Childhood Education Center and the uh, Rainwater Harvesting for Aquifer Recharge. Oh, uh, to rank those third and fourth? Yes, uh, please. Yeah, the, the rainwater for aquifer recharge would be my third choice because I feel that that should just be part of our new construction. And then the, the Chino Valley uh, uh, School District uh, would be the fourth. Thank you, sir. If you wouldn't mind giving us a few seconds here, Melissa will organize the project according to the uh, ranking and then members could provide additional comments on the adjusted list. If I could have just a quick moment before you do that. Um, of course, sir. I just wanted to share with the other members that it's my belief that we have an opportunity to fund valuable projects with money that we collected in withdrawal fees that right now aren't doing much for for us or for the active management area. Um, so I recognize that my proposal requires a significant amount of funds out of that withdrawal fee money. Um, but I'm not sure that I see on the horizon an opportunity for us to use those funds in other projects. So that's why I went in so heavy on those funds. I wanted to share that only because if others of you feel similarly, then maybe you would adjust your recommendations based on those additional funds. So I just, that's, I just wanted to share it for that perspective. Jim, could I please? Absolutely. Hey, uh, yes, sir. I, I, I think what uh, what enough uh, her her request was was a good one that we that we list our first, second, third, and fourth without amounts, and then uh, uh, I'm I'm with you. Uh, let's let's use what funds we we have available because uh, uh, we're. We're needing to get something done uh, to protect our aquifer. So, yeah, first, second, third, and fourth, and then let's fund as much as we can. And, and Jim, if I could. Absolutely, Larry. Thank you, Chris. You uh, I, I would agree with Kristen that uh, I believe that uh, we are overdue on uh, tackling some uh, major uh, forward progress with our withdrawal fees. And I, I, I think that that's a, a really good way to get three of these projects funded. Uh, quite frankly, uh, looking at the, uh, the way that the projects lay out, I would still make the argument that uh, the proposal from uh, the Arizona Department of Transportation is one where access to additional dollars uh, uh, and a larger pot of dollars in a different source, uh, meaning uh, gasoline tax money, uh, is uh, very attractive to tap into that over the long term to come up with a plan and then also make it an ongoing mandate uh, that every one of the transportation projects also incorporate uh, uh, recharge. Uh, I think that's a, a very attractive approach to where there would be some other uh, proposals on the table that would be considered more immediately. 
Okay, thank you. Well, if the members have no other comments at this point anyway, then why don't we let the uh, department staff work their magic on what we've shared so far and see what comes up. So Melissa organized the project according to the ranking of GOAC members. You'll see the currently we have the first project is Town of Fresco Valley Water Smart um, Customer Portal. Um, and then we have ADOT SR89 Stormwater Recharge Pilot Project, moving on to rainwater harvesting for aquifer recharge and Territorial Early Childhood Education Center. We could look at the funding available, and you can see that if we were to fund the first project fully, the second project would have to be funded partially from grant, and the reminder could be funded from withdrawal fees. And Melissa will do some calculations so we can see how that would look like. So you'll see that for the second project, um, if we were to use the grant money, the 150,000, we have the first project fully funded, the second project, uh, we could use $72,687 from the grant. The remainder could come from withdrawal fees. And as I said, I can do a little bit more calculations. Uh, we currently have, as I mentioned, 128,000 in the withdrawal fee fund. If we take the 27, I'll just round it to 28,000 because it makes it easier for the calculation. We still have 100,000 remained within the withdrawal fees. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Larry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would once again uh, uh, reiterate a, a previous comment that uh, with the uh, withdrawal fees, I think you can uh, see that the math would fully fund uh, three proposals and uh, and then go ahead and identify uh, and work heavily towards getting a commitment from uh, ADOT to involve uh, their 
planners, their engineers, uh, and uh, working over the long term, uh, come up with a plan that would really uh, uh, benefit the, the aquifer, uh, but without taking away some momentum from some locally grown projects. Let me make sure I understand your comment, Larry. Are you then suggesting that the $100,000 requested in this grant would be used elsewhere in anticipation of ADOT finding those funds from other locations? Or I, I'm, okay. Okay. And Jim, I'm, what I'm suggesting is exactly what I can comment on, which is my lowest ranked project is the ADOT project, and there's a reason for that. There are different funding sources to accomplish what ADOT has put out on the table here, and it is something that will benefit the, the AMA, uh, I believe, over the long term, and they are doing it in other locations without relying on grant funds or withdrawal fees. Okay. But here in our AMA, there is a, a reliance on withdrawal fees or grant fees uh, to do what is being done by ADOT and other locations. I don't understand why we should end up using the locally grown withdrawal fees or the grant fees when this is moving forward in other locations by the same state agency and not relying on those funds. That's what I'm saying. Okay, that's clearer to me. Do, is, is our presenter from ADOT still participating in the meeting? Yes, I am, I'm here. Uh, I'd like to comment on that if I could. Actually, ADOT doesn't have any uh, sites like this proposed or in operation anywhere else around the state. This is a pilot project to, de to research the amount of recharge that we can accomplish to the Little Chino Basin through dry well uh, injection of stormwater. And this, is, this study is not being done anywhere else. Just wanted to uh, put that in there for, for the uh, council. Uh, it, it, could I could I ask a question on that, Jim? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, to uh, uh, our ADOT uh, presentation, are you suggesting that there are no dry wells associated with any state highway project uh, in Arizona? No, we have 65 dry wells around the state. Uh, probably 85 percent of them are within. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, sir. 85% of the, those are within the Phoenix area. All of them have been put in uh, for stormwater management purposes and not to study recharge to the aquifer. Okay, so uh, if, I, if, if I could, Jim. Yes. Yeah, the, we're looking at 65 dry wells uh, so that are, uh, in all uh, honesty, recharging into the Phoenix AMA uh, uh, aquifer, uh, although not studied for their uh, capacity and benefit to that aquifer. Uh, I, I go, uh, go back to a previous statement, which is, uh, the high cost of putting in uh, dry wells uh, is something that is de minimis in the overall scheme of a multi-million dollar highway project, and our aquifer would get uh, a huge benefit uh, from going ahead and having just that level of effort from uh, the highway fund, whether it's, uh, well, anyway, it's, uh, uh, a great way for us to go ahead and increase the recharge capacity uh, in our AMA 
uh, as just nearly an afterthought for uh, multi-million dollar highway projects. Does anybody else have any, any other members have any comments about this discussion? Yes, Jim. Sure. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I I, uh, I realize that that uh, that ADOT has uh, a lot of funds available for various uses. I'm just looking at how we can quickly get water into our aquifer here in Chino Valley, and if if we can do this pilot project uh, with with ADOT. It gets it gets us a start. I would I'd encourage them to. I'd I'd love to see you know, dry wells all over here to take advantage of the monsoon rains. But oh, uh, it it's right. We can get a few of them. It would be a good start. Bob, do you have any comments? Not on the ADOT project. No. Okay. I'd like to ask Kent a question. Are you still available, Kent? Sure. Yes, sir. Without these funds, what is the possibility or likelihood of ADOT doing this project in Chino Valley associated with uh, the road project that you indicated? Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of the likelihood of that project going forward fund, funded from other sources. Uh, ADOT uses its funding uh, historically for building roadways and and their, their primary mission throughout the state is to provide uh, safe and reliable transportation for all, uh, all the people in Arizona. And yes. so that that being a priority in their primary mission, uh, a study like this is not put on the forefront for ADOT to fund. Uh, so I, I can't answer that, uh, that, you know, I can't say that it would never be funded or it may be funded next year. But I would think that, you know, ADOT would probably uh look at this uh as a uh funding project down the road but uh not not high on the uh on the list is it possible that it could move higher on the a dot list with more research or better understanding of how ADOT needs to protect its roads from flooding and benefit an aquifer simultaneously. Uh, so I guess where I'm going there is, is, the, is there any part of your proposal that we might be able to assist you with that can help you move this project further up on an ADOT list? Well, we're, we're willing to partner with with anyone who wants to partner uh the the project uh i i wanted wanted to say that the uh drainage study that was done in 2005 for this project was implemented on the I highway 89 widening project it collects a lot more stormwater right now than it ever would have without the uh, implementations and stormwater drainage infrastructure that was put in at that time. The problem is, is that we're still getting a lot of evaporation. We're not getting direct recharge to the aquifer. If we were using dry wells, if we were able to look at this and study this scenario, it may uh, spark an opportunity throughout the AMA and around Arizona for adequate, for more, more adequate recharge to the aquifer. Okay. Hey, Jim. Yes, Larry. 
Yeah, I, uh, I believe that the merit of the ADOT uh, proposal is outstanding. And I also believe that the impact uh, by implementing a, a plan by ADOT in a variety of locations statewide is something that merits some legislative attention that we could collectively amongst the GUAC statewide uh, could go ahead and have some uh, legislation introduced next session that would instead of using a paltry $100,000 to take a look at the statewide benefit of using ADOT property, ADOT projects, and putting in a series of, of wells just as is proposed here and come up with a statewide study that every AMA would have the benefit of just what is being proposed here. And it's gonna take more money, significantly more, but would be a very attractive legislative initiative uh, moving forward because uh, and it, it would make sense statewide, not just our AMA. Okay. Well, based on this discussion, I'd like to uh, adjust my recommendations. And I would like to see, uh, my first two would stay the same. My third recommendation would be the territorial early childhood proposal. And my last recommendation would be the ADOT proposal. And then I would like to work on coordinating with the department a legislative uh, initiative to accomplish highway protection from stormwater and its impacts on aquifer recharge. Hey, hey Jim. Yes, sir. Would uh, Anav be able to comment on whether she uh, believes there may be interest statewide for such a program uh, that would affect all of the AMAs? And uh, if she believes there might be some support for something like that going forward. I, I think there's a great possibility here. And being uh, an opportunity ramrodded by another state agency that actually has some significant dollars over time. Mr. Chair, this is Anav. Um, so, unfortunately, I won't be able to comment as to the desire statewide to implement such projects. Our funds are utilized within each AMA, our withdrawal fees, and we could only Fund, as, as I'm sure you all know, we can only fund projects within the AMA if we use withdrawal fees from a specific AMA. Besides that, our the funds that ADWR has to utilize projects ac across the state are limited from my understanding. So, so to answer your questions, I definitely cannot tell you the legislation thoughts either way, but I would say that we can look at specific AMAs and the impact and the projects that we could find in specific AMAs. I don't know if I really answered your question, but... Uh, no, 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 that, and I, if, I, if I could, I, I, it would only be a wild hope that you would be able to commit other AMAs money to us. I mean, that would be great, but I, what I was wondering is, <laughs> is if you had the, had any sense whether or not other AMAs might be interested, not in, in committing their withdrawal fees or their grant fees, but in looking at a statewide plan uh, that would incorporate water resources in with 
transportation product uh, projects uh, as a very de minimis uh, side cost, but uh, one that would have uh, potentially a huge impact statewide. I would argue and say that it's in all of the all of our benefits to conserve groundwater in whatever way possible. I would I would just be cautious in stating if there is a desire compared to the amount of money that would need to be spent. So it's all a matter of the funds available. And again, I would defer the decision or determination if that is a viable option for the um, for the specific AMAs and of course the director would have to determine such such a project. I would say that we did have already three GOAC meetings to talk about this grant. ADOT, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Kent, but ADOT have submitted only to Prescott um, AMA to receive grants. So this project hasn't been discussed nor received funding in the other three AMAs that we we have um, had these meetings and the last one ADOT hasn't applied for. So so for the grant specifically, grant funding, that wouldn't be a possibility. That being said, there are other opportunities such as the withdrawal fees in AMAs that do have withdrawal fees significant enough to fund such a project. And that's something that we'll be happy to discuss uh, with Ken and another opportunity and see where our opportunities lay. So to the members, based on this discussion, are there any other adjustments to recommendations or are they the same as they were initially presented by you? Mr. Chairman, my recommendation yes. is the same. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure where we are, Jim. In terms of, I just was curious if, based on this conversation, if you wanted to adjust your previous uh, rankings. Oh, thank you. No, I'm good. Okay. So is the spreadsheet complete at this point then, based on all the rankings? Yes, sir. So Melissa readjusted this sheet and you may see some changes mainly uh, with project two and three. So we currently still have town of Prescott Valley um, water smart customer portal number one. We do have uh, rainwater harvesting for aquifer recharge by the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition as um, number two. Uh, then we have ADOT, and then we have Chino Valley Unified School District, the early childhood education. And that may change the way that we uh, distribute funds. So if we calculate the 150,000, we could fund fully the first two projects. So Melissa would enter the full amount under uh, the second project. And again, that could be funded both projects could be funded with um, the grant. That mm -hmm. leaves us with about a little less, I would say seven and a half thousand dollars within the, the grant money. So we'll have to find which project we would like to spend that on and we could include additional monies from the withdrawal phase towards the project. So we're still working on the calculations there? So we complete we completed the calculations. We're currently looking at fully funding the first two projects. And now we have remaining 
7,556,000 uh, from the grant. In addition to that, we still have 128,000 from the withdrawal fee fund. So I would ask you, Chair, and members, if you would like to move on to fund fully or, or partial the third project. Again, we have about 7,000 from the grant and another 128 from the withdrawal fees. Or if there is any other way you would like to distribute at least that 7,000 and a half. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I uh, understanding the, the mathematics of that, uh, uh, with a motion, and, and Inav, would we need to uh, make a motion to uh, uh, dedicate mon uh, money from the withdrawal fees uh, to go ahead and fully fund the first three projects you've identified? I can only be involved with the uh, uh, one of those three uh, in terms of uh, voting, but uh, I would submit for uh, your consideration, uh, Mr. Chairman and board, uh, the funding of, of uh, uh, well, taking money from the uh, withdrawal fees to fully fund projects. To fully fund the third project? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have any comments on that? Uh, Motion? No, I, I would second that motion, Jim. So the motion is authorizing the department to utilize withdrawal fee funds to fully fund the third project in our recommendation, which is the ADOT proposal. Uh, correct, Jim, may I correct that? Yes. I, I think the motion, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, but I think the motion would be to use withdrawal fee funds uh, to, to, uh, to complete uh, the funding of the third project, or I guess use withdrawal fee funds plus grant funds to fund all three. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. I, yeah, my, just to, to be very clear on that, I cannot uh, comment and or vote on uh, projects that you have identified as number one and number two. But number three, uh, Nav, uh, I believe, said that there's 7,000 additional dollars remaining uh, that would be used for uh, the ADOT application plus uh, the balance of that I'm suggesting would come from uh, our withdrawal fees. Yes. Excellent. So, if the motion is clear, shall we have a vote? Yes, all sir. Those, all those in support of the motion signify with aye. I say aye. I say aye. Jim, I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling with not being able to make a comment about the ADOT part of this. Um, because of your conflict. Because of my conflict. I see specific amounts on the other two requests and a general amount coming from ADOT, and I, and I can't comment on that. Um, I'm a little bit, um, I'm, I'm not happy with that. I want the first two projects to go. I would like to see if there's any way to get the school into any portion of this uh, would be great. Uh, although they would be, they would be, you know, ranked where they're ranked in, in my mind. So I, I, I guess I, I guess I have to say I'm an I. Um, I, I guess I'm going to have to say I'm an I. Okay. Uh, or yes, yes. Okay. And Larry. I, I can only comment on uh, the uh, the third proposed uh, project. I, I'm unable to uh, uh, comment on uh, items number one and number two. I am an I for uh, project three and uh, uh, 
uh, using withdrawal funds to uh, make up the difference between grant funds and total uh, okay. allocation. Okay, so I believe that motion then had passed unanimously regarding withdrawal fees supplementing the request for the ADOT proposal. So now I believe we ought to suggest a recommendation to the director of the three projects that we have prioritized plus the source of funding. So I'll make a motion that the recommendation to the director is our recommendation to the GUAC is number one, um, Town of Prescott Valley, Water Smart Customer Portal. Number two, Rainwater Harvesting for Aquifer Recharge with the Upper Verde Coalition. And number three, uh, ADOT proposal for State Route 89 Stormwater Recharge Pilot Project. Do we have more discussion or a second? Second that, Chris Morley. Comments or discussion of members? Uh, once again, I I would uh, approve of the third application on that, but the first two I can't comment on or vote on. Okay. So I don't know if, if in terms of voting, if you want to uh, break that into uh, three different uh, motions, if that's uh, uh, needed. Uh, otherwise, I have to abstain. Okay. Mr. Chair um, yes. and Mr. Tarkowski, we could potentially have a motion to approve the sheet as is. So even though you may have a conflict of interest with one or two of these projects, which is uh, representing two members, I believe if we were to make a motion to approve the sheet as is, you could still participate in this vote. Bingo. So would you, so move. <laughs> would you word the recommendation or the motion then, you know? Um, withdraw my earlier motion and how would you word the motion to allow all members to vote? We could potentially have the motion as approving the the list of of ranked projects as they are currently present, taking into account uh, all of the members ranking or something in that. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> Probably could have been more eloquent, but something in in a, of its sort. Okay. Motion sound fine to me. It sounds like it's seconded. Are there any comments? Nope. Let's vote on the motion. I say aye. 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 Good job, gentlemen. Let's see. So I have as our fifth agenda item a uh, call to council. Do any council members have any uh, items they'd wish to uh, discuss or mention? Hearing none, we'll I go to agree. item number six, call to public. Do we have any members of the public that have any comments? Well, we currently have no comments in the chat. Thank you. Item number seven, unless there's an objection, I will be adjourning this meeting. Hearing no objections, the meeting is now adjourned at 1112. Thank you all very much. You did a good job. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. 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 Good seeing you, Chris. Thank you. Take care, gentlemen. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Will do. Bye now.